What is the strangest thing that happened to you that you can't logically explain? I'm too young to remember this, actually, but my mom always tells this story. Apparently, when I was younger, like barely able to speak, I was sitting on the floor playing with some toys nonchalantly with my mom. When I just said, when I was in heaven, I met a woman who said you'd be the perfect mommy for me. I apparently held the belief that I was in heaven before being born. And an angel looked at me and chose the mom I went to. My mom asked me to describe the woman. And I apparently described my mom's great grandmother perfectly. Down to the eye color. I had never met my great great grandmother. Nor seen a picture of her. In 1996. I had just dropped out of university and was moving home to my parents place. My tail was firmly between my legs. I had almost no money and no job prospects. Basically I was screwed. I had an old jeep common she with all my belongings in the back and 200 miles to go. I borrowed 20 from a friend for gas and started the trip. I got to a point that was 30 miles from home and was on MT. I pulled into a gas station rest stop and sort of cried for a minute in my truck. I needed 5 for gas to make it the rest of the way and had nothing. There was no way I could call my dad and ask for help. He was already so disappointed. After a minute I started searching around my truck for change. Anything. I opened the glove box and there were these paper loyalty bucks for a gas station that I never used. It turns out it was the exact gas station that I was stopped at. 4.70 worth of bucks. I found another 2.00 in change. Put 6.00 in the gas tank and bought a coke. I made it home. Fast forward 20 years. I had sorted my crap out and am a lawyer. That gas station hired me as their outside counsel. I got to tell this story to the president of the company. Once. My mom and I were driving to Las Vegas from Santa Clarita. We were just passing Busto and on the I-15. It was right about high noon and very hot. Not a cloud in the sky. She had a fancy Alexis at the time with a touchscreen console on the dash that could play DVDs while driving. I remember we were on a long stretch of road with a lot of space between cars on the highway. One minute we see nothing ahead of us and then all of a sudden. A woman was walking across the highway right in front of our vehicle. My mom swerved behind her and barely missed her. She pulled off to the shoulder and we look behind us. And we see her go all the way across the highway. Including westbound traffic. Then she turned around. And walked all the way across again. Each time. Nearly getting clipped by an unsuspecting and oncoming car like ourselves. At one point. A semi truck almost hit her head on missing her by literally one step. Each step she took was a steady and confident step, looking ahead of her and never batting an eye to any oncoming traffic. She was barefoot mind you, and walking on the boiling asphalt with zero sense of urgency. So my mom calls 911. We are directed to highway patrol. They say they've received numerous reports and they're headed out to it. My mom decided, after hanging up to slowly reverse down the shoulder, to get a better look and see if she's okay yes. I know. Stupid in more than one way. As we get to a spot behind her now. She's crossed the highway and is now in front of our vehicle. This part one will never forget. The woman slowly turns her head and looks at us and is now slowly but steadily walking towards our car. She was white as day in every way. White nightgown. Pale. Dry. Wrinkled skin. White hair. And the palest bluish gray eyes I've ever seen and barefoot. Almost looked like a walking dead version of Rose Dawson from Titanic. I was in the passenger seat, which was on the shoulder, when my mom made eye contact. She froze. Absolutely shut down. I remember the woman walking so close to my door. I could see her eyes make contact with mine. It looked as if she was blind and lifeless, but could not just see me, but see into and through me like into my soul. I went cold immediately. She reached for my door handle and I remember screaming at my mom to punch the gas and without hesitation. She came too quick and we peeled out of there. In the back window, I saw her watch us speed off and then continued across the road again. A mile down the highway, we called highway patrol to see what happened and they didn't have a clue what we were talking about and said they got no reports of a woman crossing the highway. My mom to this day still doesn't remember the time between when we reversed to when we dipped out 
I have no idea what happened that day except for what I witnessed and experienced. A car going 50, 60 kpm hit both of my knees in 2008 it was 100% my fault. I wasn't paying attention when I crossed the road and not only I didn't have any broken bone whatsoever, I didn't even fall. I did flinch quite a lot, though. My knees and leg hurt for about 2 days. But I really can't explain how a car going relatively fast hit me only got me to have barely more than a couple bruises. When I was about 12 years old I went up to Lake Tahoe with my friend and his parents who had a condo in Incline Village. One day, the two of us are walking to the bowling alley and cross the street in a crosswalk. Right before we get to the curb, a car comes really close to hitting us. All of a sudden, we are both up on the curb. Like we were lifted a few feet. We both looked at each other strangely. Did you jump? No. Did you? No. We spent the next hour kind of dumbfounded. It didn't feel like a shove or any use of force. We were still in the street. Then we weren't. Grim Reaper was like. Oh shit wrong guys. As a child visiting my grandma's house my mum's mum. Whenever I left the house I'd wave next door. To Ken who was always sat in the bay window looking out at the sea. They lived right on the coast off the North Sea in Hartlepool UK we'd never really talk. But just a little wave before I went to get into the car. One time I'm leaving my grand's house. I'm in front of my mum who stopped at the door to talk to my gran. So I head down the steps and towards the gate. I turn back and see Ken in the window. Big smile as usual. Waving at me. I give him a wave back. He stands up. Gives me the thumbs up. And wanders towards the back of the room. My mum comes walking down the steps and asks who are you waving at. I replied Ken. To this day, I can remember my mum's face. She just went white, but didn't say anything to me. It was only a few weeks later when she plucked up the courage to tell me that Ken had died a few days prior to our visit to my grand's. I don't believe in ghosts, but I know I saw him. I can still picture his striped grey sweater with light stripes across it. Him waving and getting up out of his chair. There was no one else in the house. He lived by himself. Brains are weird. Update 1. Sorry for the delay in getting back. But I had an update from my mum regarding me seeing Ken. I reminded her of the incident. And what she can remember of it. I got this reply. I'm sure you saw him too. I know there's someone in our house. Ashley mum's cat sees them on the stairs the same time every night. If we are in the lounge. I always say hello. Definitely doesn't feel like a threatening presence though. So now it turns out there's not just Ken next door. There's someone in my mam's house. Maybe it's my gran. Once covered is over I'll have to stay over a few nights to see for myself. When I was 10 years old I didn't want to go to school one day. I faked a stomach ash so my grandmother would let me stay home. I've always been a bad liar. So my GMA tried to call my bluff. She told me if I was too sick for school then she would be scheduling me a doctor's appointment. Three hours later I was rushed into emergency surgery. My fake illness was actually appendicitis and it was so inflamed that if I hadn't come in that day my appendix would have ruptured potentially killing me. I felt 100% fine that day. Faking sick saved my life. About 5 years ago I was out with two friends. At the time. This group of friends liked to party hard. As did I. We were a few years out of college living in a resort town. That night. We went out to dinner and then went to a bar. We all did a round of shots when we got to the bar. Immediately after the shot. I felt like I needed to throw up. It was odd because I had not drank much at dinner and I was very accustomed to taking shots. This was a very bizarre reaction for me. I had been driven there by one of the friends, but I immediately decided I needed to leave. So I got a cab, went home, and felt completely fine when I got home. I would usually have been out until 4-5 am, but I was home by 11 pm. I watched TV and went to bed, but the whole night, I had a weird feeling. I woke up the next morning and the two girls I was with had been in a car accident. The person driving was drunk and texting, and she hit a huge telephone pole. The pole fell onto the car, almost splitting the car in half. By the grace of God, the universe, something, neither of them were harmed. But if someone was sitting in the back seat, they would have potentially been dead. 
I'm 100% certain I would have gotten into that car and likely would have been sitting in that seat. I don't duck with drinking and driving or anyone who attempts to drink and drive anymore. Edit typo. I will never forget witnessing this moment. In my physics gen ed last year, we were split up in groups and working on a lab. A guy at another table let out a yell while extending his arms and fell headfirst off his chair. The very second in between his yell and hitting the floor, a beeping started going off in the room. Followed by the words an emergency is happening in your building. Please evacuate at the nearest exit. And accompanied by flashing lights. The guy is having a seizure on the floor. So all we are focusing on is getting him help. A campus police officer comes in and tells us the rest of the science buildings have already evacuated for the fire alarm. Most of us leave to give some space to the people helping the guy. While outside, we are talking amongst ourselves. Absolutely baffled by the coinciding events we just witnessed. Did the flashing of the alarm trigger epilepsy? No. Because he was already on the floor by the time the lights kicked in. Was there some kind of sensor on him that alerted when his body was experiencing an emergency? No. Because it was his first seizure. Just reading it might sound lame. But witnessing it and working out what was happening in real time was just eerie. Too long didn't read I watched a guy start having his first scary looking seizure the millisecond before the building's fire alarm went off. I once was changing pants in my room before work and took off my belt. After putting on my other pair of pants, I went to put my belt back on but it belt was gone. No one else was in the room and I spent a good 10 minutes looking for it as I had simply set it on the floor. It's been 10 years and I've never seen that belt again. At friend's house, friend was in garage working on dirt bike. Driveway empty because parents left a while ago. Go inside to grab a soda, but decide to look for his cat, who I haven't seen all day. I walk into the office, and as I'm calling her name, a deep man's voice goes me out right into my right ear. I jump and run around the main floor looking for who said that. Didn't find anyone. I'm a firefighter, and we got a call for an overdose around 3am to a rough part of our district in the middle of winter. Unfortunately the patient was long gone, and her dealer, or whatever found her like that, when he dropped some stuff. As we were packing up our stuff mind you this is a absolutely trashed mobile home. I hear something down the hall that said lights. I ask my partner if he said anything as it was just him, and I cleaning up he said no. I walk to the far end of the trailer, where I heard it, and shine my flashlight I get a reflection out of the window. They have a small tool shed, and it had a flickering light. It piqued my interest, so my partner and I go out there. We hear crying, and notice the door is padlocked. We cut it, and this little 6 year old girl was in there. She said her mom puts her in there, when she gets mad at her. She said she got scared, when she heard the sirens, and didn't know what to do. To this day I have no idea what happened or where the voice came from. But I'll take the win on it. Edit a couple people wondering about what happened after. My partner and I took her to the children's hospital closest to us and we wrote our report and ate chips and a sandwich we took from the lounge while they called a social worker. She was a really sweet girl. The voice was not a little girl voice I 100% thought it was my partner since it sounded like a guy. Edit too sorry for using peaked. I was between calls at work pretty early in the morning and grandma is not my defining character of mine. Thanks for reading hug your kid is a little tighter tonight. I once shut my ear in a car door. No idea how. Have tried to recreate it and can't. But my god that hurt. You deserve something for this. This one is strange to me because it was so long ago and I'm convinced I have to be remembering things wrong. I was a young kid at the grocery store and I saw this toy helicopter like Hot Wheels sized that I really wanted for some reason. I, of course, didn't buy it, but it the memory of it stuck in my head. A few nights later, I had a dream where I was playing with the helicopter, but I realized it was a dream and stupid young me thought that if I put it under my pillow, it would still be there when I woke up. After that, I woke up and eagerly checked under the pillow to get it. For some reason. It was right where I left it in the dream. As a kid, I wasn't surprised to find it there as it all made perfect since to me then. But years later I have no clue how the toy helicopter actually got underneath the pillow. 
When I was 12 I was sitting on the front steps of our house when I heard a crackling sound and what sounded like wind blowing against flames. I looked up and saw a fireball overhead. It looked to be just a few feet above the roof line and traveled over the tree line until I couldn't see it anymore. Never even told my parents because it seemed so unbelievable. One morning I woke up and noticed my camera was on top of the sofa opposite my bed. I knew I didn't put it there because it was a very expensive camera and it could very easily fall from this place. I had placed it in my cabinet. I went over, picked it up, and turned it on and clicked the button to view photos. There were hundreds of photos of me sleeping, all seemingly taken from the back of the sofa. I was literally so freaked out. I couldn't stop crying. I lived alone. It was just photo after photo of me sleeping. The photos were taken in quick snap, where the camera takes approximate one photo per second. I later realized the camera didn't even have a quick snap setting so technically it was impossible for the camera to take the photos at all. The timestamps suggest all photos were taken between 2 and 3 am. I've never figured out WTF happened, how the camera got to the sofa, or how it is even possible for a camera with no quick snap to quick snap. But I still have a USB with the photos on it and it still freaks me the duck out. Edit to answer a few questions. I'm safe. This happened several years ago. I now live with my partner and we have several dogs and a very good home security system. There was no sign of forced entry to my home. I owned the home. And I had the locks changed when I moved there because I felt uneasy about living alone good hunch haha. I did go to the police. They did not give a shit. They said it's probably a friend playing a prank. My mum had a key to the house. Weirdly this thread has actually jogged my memory about something potentially related I had completely forgotten about that was sitting deep. Deep down in my memory bank. Apra multiply 12 months before the camera incident I received a letter in my PO box that was typed not handwritten and addressed directly to me saying if I did not agree to meet with the sender, they would kill me while I sleep. To be honest. I dead said thought it was a stupid joke because I couldn't think of anybody that would want me to meet with them and I binned the letter and never told anybody. I got 3 or 4 of those threatening letters demanding that I respond but no actual way of responding or no hint about who it was from. The sender wrote like I should know who it is but I did not. One letter did provide a time and place to meet but of course I did not attend. That was the final letter. I did move house and change my postal address shortly after the camera incident though. I'm alive right now. So obviously they are all talk. No action haha. 